in 2001, Westwood Studios, most famous for creating Command & Conquer, released their first 3D real-time strategy game, Emperor Battle for Doom. The third of Westwood's games to be set within the Dune universe and a direct sequel to Dune 2000, Emperor builds off the success of its predecessors by bringing new features to the table a fairly nonlinear campaign, random events, a vast assortment of new units and abilities, and, of course, the 3D engine itself. The game received mostly positive acclaim for the new additions as well as the old standbys, solid strategy gameplay, an entertaining story, good background music, and absolutely amazing live-action cutscenes. Of course, as with all games, Emperor comes with its flaws. The game can feel repetitive. The random events can be frustrating. The unit pathfinding can be infuriating. And the AI can be as intelligent as a sack of potatoes. No offense to future viewers if they are, in fact, sacks of potatoes. All in all, Emperor Battle for Dune is a good game and worthy of attention from real-time strategy fans. For those of you unfamiliar with the Dune universe, the game's setting is based upon David Lynch's theatric release Dune, which, in turn, is based upon Frank Herbert's legendary novel Dune. Emperor stays faithful to its source material. Almost all Mintats have massive eyebrows which moonlight as fly swatters. Almost all Bene Gesserit are creepy women recovering from chemotherapy, and almost all, almost all Harkonnen have little devices known as heart plugs. You remember what a heart plug is, don't you? Oh yes, yes. We had some memorable times together, but all good things must come to an end. Bring the replacement out of my spice planet and make sure that he understands the failure of his pain. Oh, endless pain. As you wish, my Lord Baron. The movie's depiction of this scene is far worse. As for the story itself, Emperor begins shortly after the conclusion of Dune 2000. The illustrious and glorious Padishah Emperor Frederick Carino, Emperor of the known universe, has been murdered by his own concubine, and the entire Imperium has fallen into chaos. There are three remaining houses who possess the strength required to fill the void. The Atreides, the Harkonnen, and the Ordos. In the single-player campaign, you play as a commander for one of those houses, fulfilling its objectives and, ultimately, hopefully, securing its dominance. I've already decided what house will be serving in the series, the insidious and vile Harkonnen. But if it makes you feel better, you can tell me what house you think we should play in the comments. Speaking of personal experiences, I don't have many with Emperor Battle for Dune. At the time of the game's release, I was too busy playing StarCraft to care. I've gone through all of Emperor's campaigns before, but only once, and I'm plagued these days by a faulty memory. Therefore, you can look forward to seeing me counter the AI's flaws with my own flashes of incompetence. To compensate, I will be playing this game on its standard difficulty level. There is a hard one. But knowing what awaits me in the service of House Harkonnen, I really don't want to play one of those maps on hard. I'll let you know when we get to it. I'm not that much of a masochist. Finally, I'm going to shut up now and let the game take us home. Emperor, Battle for Dune. Would you be so kind?
I saw this. All of it. You have the sight. Don't pretend ignorance. My Bene Gesserit sisters knew of my history. Of my time among the Fremen. It's true. You drank the water of life. You survived the weirding ritual. How else could I do as my sisters commanded? Without the power of the blessed water, I could never have survived the scrutiny of the Emperor's seers. But you did. And Carino is dead by your hand. Perhaps you are the one. The atrocity was born of duty. I served you well. You expect more from me? What do you want from me? Speak. Truth. You dare to use the voice. You dare to enter my mind unbidden. You are not what you seem, Reverend Mother. What horror are you planning? This interview is over. You will obey us, sister, or you will die. God! I can only die once. There are deaths, and there are deaths. You will obey us. Know then that the first great spice war on the planet Arrakis has ended. The Emperor Carino is dead, poisoned by his concubine, the Lady Ilara. Now, a new war rages for the control of the Golden Lion Throne. A great civil war between the noble houses of the Lansrad. Only three houses remain with the resources and ability to seize control of the throne. The noble Atreides, the insidious Ordos, the evil Harkonnen. All three are evenly poised. All three are equally committed. All three know that the key to victory lies on a vast, barren, waterless world. Arrakis, Home of the most precious substance in the known universe. The spice melange. The spice extends life. The spice expands consciousness. The spice is vital to space travel. A new war begins. Each of the three great houses must attempt to gain the majority of occupied territories on the planet. Who controls Arrakis controls the Spice. And who controls the Spice controls the universe. House Carino is ended. Another house must take its place. I am Shafla. I represent the Spacing Guild's interest in this matter. Under the terms of the Great Convention, a limited form of warfare known as the War of Assassins has been declared by three factions. House Atreides, House Harkonnen, and House Ordos. The rules of conflict prescribe formal declarations of intent. Who would speak for House Atreides? I am the Duke Achilles of Arrakis. Of Arrakis! Oh my, that is too rich. I see the Atreides still harbor delusions of superiority. I was told I would be able to speak. Baron, you will have your time. Indeed, I will. House Atreides will abide by the terms of the Great Convention. Our intent is to secure the planet Arrakis and oversee the production of spice for the good of all. Baron Rakan. I had hoped to avoid this unfortunate conflict. My intent was to make a gesture of peace. Peace? We have oft times seen the Harkonnen's treachery. While he talks of peace, Plans for war. Talk is relevant. Peace is not an option. Who is this creature? 
It speaks for the Executrix of House Orders. Is the Executrix afraid to speak for themselves? Are they so cowardly? We are the Executrix of House Orders. We fear nothing. We will abide by the terms prescribed by this council. We will eliminate all competitors in the end. We will prevail. All other considerations are trivial. Let it be war then! We will take Arrakis! We will control we the will space! We will control nothing! Enough! Know then that the War of Assassins has begun. The war will be limited to the planet Arrakis. Use of atomics is forbidden. So long as these rules are followed, the Guild will not interfere. But understand this. During this conflict and following it, no matter what the outcome, the spice must flow. This council is ended. The war begins. It has never ended. Arrakis lies at the hub of the universe. Once more, the wheel is poised to turn. House Harkonnen, from the volcanic wasteland of Gidi Prime. The Harkonnen know only malevolence, hatred, and brutality. Their leader is the corrupt and vile Baron Rakan. Rakan's power-hungry sons, Gunsang and Kopek, eagerly await the Baron's death. Each plots to take his place, but while he lives, they feed upon him like parasites. <laughs>